My name's Miss Megan, Miss Quinones, or Miss Q, whichever works best for you. And I'm a Food Corps AmeriCorps service member serving with the Mayor's Office of Food Access in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm so excited today to share with you all a project myself and my fellow Food Corps service members have been working on, and that is Food Corps Storytime Fridays. The purpose of Storytime Fridays is to connect Boston public school youth with culturally competent and culturally responsive books so all youth feel represented in fiction and nonfiction alike. We're so excited to share that for the month of November, in honor of Native American Heritage Month, the first book we will be reading is When We Were Alone. Throughout the rest of the school year, there will be a number of books featured that are relating to different cultural or heritage months, food holidays, or any other holidays that just celebrate heritage, culture, and food alike. I am so excited to begin reading with you all and can't wait for the rest of this year. When We Were Alone by David A. Robertson, illustrated by Julia Felt. Today I helped my cocomb in her flower garden. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. Nakum, why do you wear so many colors? I asked. Nakum said, Well, Nusissim, when I was your age at home in my community, my friends and I wore many different colors, but at the school I went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All the children were dressed the same, and our clothes weren't colorful at all. We all mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that? I asked. They didn't like that we wore such beautiful colors, Nakom said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. But sometimes, in the fall, when we were alone and the leaves had turned to their warm autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground. We would pile the leaves over the clothes they had given us and we would be colorful again. And this made us happy. Now, Nicole said, I always wear the most beautiful colors. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate and they reached all the way to the ground. When my cocomb turned to fix the latch, I saw her braid hung almost as low as the vines. It was like she had a tail. Nakom, why do you wear your hair so long? I asked. Nakom said, well, Nusissim, when I was your age, at home, in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It made us feel strong and proud, but at the school I went to, Far away from home, they cut off all our hair, our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. Why did you have to wear your hair like that? I asked. They didn't like that we were proud, Nakom said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. But sometimes, in the spring, when we were alone, and the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick up blades from the ground. We would braid them into the short hair they had given us, and we would have long hair again, and this made us happy. Now, Nakom said, I always wear my hair very long. After my Kakom had fixed the latch, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle-dressed dancer. She fed the bird and whispered, Napanaisis, Michiso, Tamasikatien, Thomas Geisian. Here, little bird, eat so you will get big and strong. And her words sounded just like a poem. Nakom, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Nakom said, Well, Nusissim, when I was your age, at home, in my community, my friends and I always spoke our language. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. All the children used their strange words, and we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in their language? I asked. They didn't like that we spoke our language. 
Nakom said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. But sometimes, in the summer, when we were alone and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say so that we wouldn't forget them. And this made us happy. Now, Nakom said, I always speak my language. After our gardening work was done, I sat with my Kakom in the backyard. Her brother came over and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate bannock. The tea was hot and sweet, and the bannock was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My Kakom and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Nakom, why do you and Nakomis always spend time together? I asked. Nakom said, well, Nusisum, when we were your age at home in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together, and shared everything. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nakoma separated? I asked. They didn't like when we were with family, Nakom said, because when we were together, we thought too much of home. But sometimes in the winter, when we were alone and we were sure that nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mitts and in the crisp, cold air, we would hold hands so we could be with each other. And this made us happy. Now, Nakom said as she reached over and held my uncle's hand in mind, I am always with my family. The end. Thank you so much for tuning in to our very first Food Core Storytime Friday. We can't wait to see you again next week. Stay safe.